The San Antonio Brahmas at Memphis Showboats at noon Eastern on ESPN. And the Arlington Renegades at St. Louis Battlehawks at 8 on ABC. Then Sunday, the Birmingham Stallions battle the Michigan Panthers at noon on ESPN. versus Joe on ESPN Radio. As a reminder, we will not... The Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to The Hunt Palmer Show on 104.5 ESPN. ESPN Baton Rouge. Locking down the middle of the day. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. This is Hunt Palmer. Social. I'm looking at a rack right now. Everything on it's three dollars. Now, not everything in the store is three dollars, but just about everything in the store is on a discount. LSU Apparel, 25% off. If you got a little leaguer in your life or youth baseball player in your life, bats 30% off. Those bats can get a little pricey. 30% is a big deal, uh, and they've got a huge tent outside. All kinds of shoes. They got quarter zips for half off out there. It's an incredible deal here at Red Stick Sports. So if you got some time today, get on by. The sale will be going on tomorrow as well. We'll be here for the next two hours and really excited to be here. Our Friday shows are brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. And we have got a ton to get to. Preston Guy in 15 minutes talking LSU spring football. One week left for the Tigers in spring, and we'll see him inside Tiger Stadium coming up next Saturday for the spring game. So we'll talk a little bit about that with Preston. Chris Demui going to join us in his normal Friday spot at 1.30 talking some Fighting Tiger baseball. They get a win over Vanderbilt. We will start there. Tigers last night take care of business. Uh, it looked really easy, and then it got really dicey. But in the end, LSU did enough to win the ball game, 10 to 6, to take Game One of the series over the Vanderbilt Commodores and move to three and seven in SEC play. I thought it was absolutely the correct move to send your ace out there in Game One of this series. I know that Jay talked about rest last week. How much of that was real? How much of that was dodging Hagen Smith? I'll never know, but I have a feeling I, I do. Um, and so it was time to send him back out there in game one of this series. No question to me. And Luke Holman set the tone. He threw up four straight zeros to open the game, had eight strikeouts through those first four innings, and got LSU into the flow of the ball game. And finally, LSU got to Grayson Carter in the third inning. Um, and that's no small feat because Grayson Carter has real stuff. There are guys with better numbers on this Vanderbilt staff. There may not be anybody with better true stuff than what Grayson Carter has. It is legit 98-99 with the fastball. He's got a good breaking ball, and LSU put together great at bat after great at bat there in the third inning. It started with the Pearson home run. Paxton Kling worked the count full and drew a walk. Then Stephen Milan put down a great bunt and beat it out for a single. Uh, Bingham hit a double play ball right to the second baseman, but he did hit it pretty hard. Second baseman couldn't get a handle on it, threw it into left field. You'll take a break. At this point, when you're 2-7 and seven in the league, you'll take whatever break they're willing to give you there. Then Tommy White cashed in on it, had an RBI single to center field. After Jared Jones ground out, Brady Neal two-run opposite field single to left field. And then Travinsky was hit by a pitch, and Braswell grounded out for an RBI. And LSU at that point had put a six spot up in the third inning. Really, really good sequence of at-bats there. You did get the long ball early, but it wasn't just the long ball. It was manufacturing runs. It was putting the ball in play, hitting the ball the other way, up the middle. I, I really liked LSU's at-bats there in the third inning, and then you made it hurt worse in the fourth inning by attacking on three more runs over Carter and chasing him from the ball game. At the end, he only had two strikeouts in three and two-thirds innings. That's quality stuff. That is good baseball by LSU to take a guy with that kind of stuff who struck out 11 last week against a terrible Missouri team, albeit, but 11 strikeouts in eight and a third, and to put the ball in play time after time, I thought that was really, really good stuff from LSU. But at that point, I got a little greedy. And again, I'm fine winning the game. They won the game. It's not like they torched the entire bullpen. They used one guy. But it was the guy that I really would prefer not to use. (laughs) If it's a 9 nothing game and you've got your ace on the mound, I really would prefer it if you could get home without using Griffin Herring. And I say that 
because of the situation that LSU has put themselves in through the first three weeks of conference play. If LSU's 8-1 and one going into last night, sure, burn Herring and get a win. Get out of town. That's, that's great. I don't really that, – you're, you're trying to just get individual wins. And to a, an extent, you are at this point, but LSU needs kind of like a bunch of wins. And if you're trying to beat a really good team like Vanderbilt, you'd prefer to keep as many quote-unquote bullets in your chamber as you possibly could. And I'd really like to have Griffin Herring tonight or tomorrow if things get hairy. And you don't want them to get hairy when you have a 9 to nothing lead. But they did. And Herring came in there in the sixth inning when Holman was, should have gotten out of it with a Michael Braswell ground ball that goes right through his wickets. But he comes in after giving a couple, couple hits, settles in, and and gets out of it at 9-6 to six in the sixth inning. And then he was able to take it home from there. And LSU added a run in the eighth inning and, and made it stick. And when the dust settles, Holman's gone 97 pitches in five and two-thirds. And Griffin Herring has burned himself for this weekend with a 56-pitch outing. But after those first couple of hits, he was fantastic once again. Six strikeouts in three and a third. And what we've seen is kind of Griffin Herring blossoming into a star out of the bullpen. And that's going to happen when you've got the depth of talent that LSU has. I wish it would happen with three or four guys instead of just the one. But he's become a real a real force in the LSU bullpen, and you saw that last night. So um, I'm, I'm thrilled that LSU won the ball game. Uh, I'd like to play a little bit better defense at shortstop. I'd like to hold a, a 9 nothing lead uh, and not have to go to the top end of your bullpen, but you had to do that in Starkville a few weeks ago, and you had to do it again uh, last night, but you did get the win. If you look at the box score from LSU, you know Bingham comes through with another home run. He's doing a great job of creating some backspin on those line drives and driving them into the left field seats. He did not hit for a lot of power at Arizona. Uh, that's a cavernous ballpark out there, so it makes a little bit of sense that he didn't, but he's found a little bit of a dependable power stroke here at LSU, and <laughs> LSU will take it uh, at this point. Uh, big big one swing from Tommy White. Jared Jones continues to hit in Southeastern Conference play. That was the concern with Jared Jones, not whether or not he could light it up in February against guys that throw 87 miles an hour. We saw that last year. And then you get into conference play, guys tick up with the velocity into the mid-90s, and then he starts struggling with the breaking ball. And so you, you – had, it was fair to question whether or not Jared Jones uh, was going to adjust to SEC pitching this time around in his second year in the program. Well, now we've got just about a month's worth of SEC action, and he is hitting the ball hard against SEC arms. Um, and last night, you know, and I know Grayson Carter, I said, well, there's number four starter, and I, I would suggest he is their fourth best starting pitcher um, in terms of the numbers and the experience, but it's real SEC stuff, and I thought Jones did an awesome job of, uh, of hitting the ball hard uh, against him. Uh, Travinsky got a hit, which drove in a couple of runs. And then Pearson with the big fly, which you, you really like to see. The, the pressure was on LSU last night, quite frankly. I don't know any other way to put it. You have Cunningham and, uh, and uh, Carter Holton coming the next two days for Vanderbilt, who were fantastic arms. And you had your ace going last night. It was the right move, but it does put the pressure on you to win the game. And LSU got that done. Now your job is to get one of the next two. I'd love to get greedy and get them both. I, trust me, I would love it. But your job is to get one of the next two. You're going to give the ball to Gage Jump tonight, and you got to hope that Gage Jump's got his good stuff. Hope he's got the stuff that he had in Houston, not the stuff that he had in Fayetteville. Um, and if he does, he should give you a chance. And you've still got Ackenhausen ready to go, and you've still got Gidry ready to go, and you've still got Justin Lohr and Uyoa ready to go. And so you, you've got – Herring saved your bullpen. He came in and, and gave you the length. He's burned for the weekend, but he gave you the length. Your pitching set up okay, but it's not set up as well as Vanderbilt's is. So that's why you had to get that win last night. If you start to feel a little bit better about yourself, if you can play a really good ball game tonight uh, and get a victory. Vanderbilt has not won a league game on the road yet. They're undefeated at home, 6-0. and they're defeated on the road, 0-4. Um, thankfully, um, for me, myself, self-proclaimed uniforms are, don't have to look at Vanderbilt in those ridiculous black pinstripe uniforms tonight. They'll look in, they'll look like a real baseball team instead of a, a slow-pitch softball team like they did last night. But it should be a really good atmosphere at the box tonight. Weather's fantastic. Uh, 7 o'clock first pitch. You can certainly listen to that on our sister station, Eagle 98.1. It'll be Chris Blair and Doug Thompson on the call. Um and it's, it's another – they're all big for LSU at this point. I don't know any other way to say it. LSU simply must 
uh, play really good baseball or else the hole becomes too big. And you know the task next week in a, in a small ballpark against a team that hits a ton of home runs is going to be a daunting one. On your home field, you got to take advantage. And I thought LSU really played a, a good ball game last night. They had a sloppy inning, but they played eight good innings, and it didn't derail you because your offense was good enough uh, to dig yourself all the way out of that hole. So Tigers uh, improved to 21-10 and 10 on the season, 3-7 and seven in SEC play. Our baseball breakdowns all season long brought to you by Pluckers Wing Bar. Friday shows are brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Not a Linton Friday anymore. Uh, we're past Easter, but it's a fantastic opportunity to get on by Corks and get some delicious uh, crispy fried catfish, some awesome jumbo cult golf shrimp. If you're tailgating out of the box tonight, bring a huge platter out there. They do catering orders. They do the big haul. If you've got like a hester size family, it's got more than the average folks, uh, you can go ahead and bring that, uh, bring that on home. It is fantastic. Love the folks over at Cork. They're on uh, government between Jefferson and Foster. Fantastic new food uh, concept in Baton Rouge here that uh, spurs from the guys over at Kuyans in Port Allen. We are here at Red Stick Sports, our annual tent sale. Get on by fantastic deals all over the store. Looking at something to wear at the box tonight. I'm looking at an entire wall of LSU baseball jerseys, LSU baseball fishing shirts, fantastic dry fits. Got the Sailor Mike logo, the Eye of the Tiger logo, and all the LSU stuff, 25% off here at Red Stick Sports. We're going to step aside for a timeout. When we come back, Preston Guy talking some LSU spring football. You're listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Visit us, visit us at LaBerge Baton Rouge Casino this spring for all the hoops and hockey playoff action. We got the biggest screens, the best food and drink. Plus, we're giving away pin cash bonuses and prizes to pin play rewards members. Not a member? That's all right. Join today by downloading and registering for the pin play app from the App Store. Unlock all the fun, including a chance to win up to $2,000 in pin cash. All this and more make LaBerge Baton Rouge Casino your spring sports viewing headquarters. Must be 21 or older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com.
Time to start dancing in the desert. It's the 2024 NCAA Men's Final Four in Phoenix. Tune in for live coverage starting Saturday afternoon at 3. From the team at Westwood One right here on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Listening to the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. We're here at Red Stick Sports, our annual sidewalk sale. You can't miss it here on Essen Lane. Huge tent out in the parking lot. See some shoes out there. Last pair, seventy-five percent off. It's, that's a pretty good deal on some cleats or some new basketball shoes. Get on by here at Red Stick Sports. We're having a good time. We'll be here until 3 o'clock. Time to talk some football. To do that, we bring in our guy, Preston Guy from TigerBait.com, as we do each and every Friday on the Jim's Firearms Hotline. Preston, how are you? You know, Hunt, I'm doing good. I got some good memories of that Red Stick tent sale. Probably every good pair of cleats I got growing up. Look, they got bats in here for thirty percent off. You talk about that's a couple hundred dollars in terms of buying a bat. That's a good, good chunk of change you're saving here. I, I used to just cherish getting a new bat when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, man, got some good gear. Probably all of my athletic shoes came from that very sale. So, Love man, to hear it. Uh, look, I, I think we've all kind of been looking at LSU spring football and kind of waiting for something interesting to happen or something that would pique our attention. It hadn't really happened much for me, but it did earlier this week when P.J. Woodland started to get some first-team reps, and then we heard Blake Baker talk about him yesterday. Uh, what, did, uh, what did that mean to you? Well, um, probably surprising how quick it happened, but I can tell you from practice, he was a guy who's been catching our eye. We look at him. He's nimble. I mean, he can move, and he's got some good footwork. Uh, coaches really like him and like his potential and kind of caught a lot of guys off guard. They really felt like they had found a diamond in the rough uh, when, when they found him. You know, he was Mississippi player of the year, guy who got kind of overlooked. He was labeled as an athlete instead of a true corner like he obviously is. Um, and, you know, he, he's a guy they're high on. A lot of people were overlooking him because he's one of those guys. They had a four-star flip to Georgia um, and had to, you know, pull him in as a almost like a you don't want to call it a backup but you know he's a guy they brought him in to replace someone else they had higher on their board well he's been highly impressed since he arrived i'm a little surprised to see him get first team reps this quickly but on the other hand not really because the, the truth is anybody in this secondary who is playing average or slightly above average will probably be your best DB. I mean, that's just realistically where they are coming from from last year. Now, some other guys might improve. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind with that is Zy Alexander is still on the sideline recovering from that torn ACL. And, you know, he's moving around. I saw him in his little sleeve around his knee. He doesn't have a brace on or crutch or anything. Like He's moving around, but, you know, he's not going to be there till fall. And then the question is, will he be 100%? So, just keep that in mind that Zy Alexander is sitting around, you know, your most productive corner from a year ago. How do you feel about both of the Ohio State transfers in the secondary? Oh, well, J.K. Johnson um, seems like we're just waiting on him to break out and do something. He was very highly recruited out of school, but, you know, I haven't seen much out of him in this spring, uh, you know, and there's been other DBs who are making a noise. Um in terms of Jair Brown, I mean, he's kind of in that same boat. <laughs> you know? uh, he's out there. He's getting reps with the second team. But, you know, this is this is a secondary that is wide open. I was on uh, another radio show earlier this week, and they asked me if the five guys were kind of set in stone. I said, not at all. I mean, I, I penciled them in at best. But, you know, and I mentioned P.J. Woodland was a guy we could see emerge. And lo and behold, a couple days later, there he is coming out for first-team reps. I mean, this secondary is wide open for anybody who comes and is able to perform at a, at a high level. There's not – I don't think there's anybody who's earned trust or earned their keep in the entire secondary. So, you know, I'm not writing anybody off yet. So how do you feel about the secondary? Right now, not, I mean, feel better than I felt a year ago because when I go out there practice a year ago – we saw 
And first team, second team, third team offense just torched this defense no matter what. And we, we had our concerns, but we kind of thought, well, they can't be as bad as they're showing right now. They'll, they'll turn it off once, once SEC play comes around or once, you know, they get to play a real football. Well, they did it. <laughs> exactly what they showed us in practice is exactly what we got on the field. So they, while the offense does have the upper hand, it's definitely not as wide of a gap as it was a year ago. And I think that that's because the scales have been tipped on both sides. I think the offense won't be as productive as it year, was a year ago. You'd have to be a fool to believe that. But I really am starting to see some pride in plays made out of this secondary. Probably Sage Ryan is your best defensive back right now. And I know a lot of fans wince when they hear that. But it seems like he's really starting to blossom and come into his own. You know, he is a veteran in this defensive backfield. And, you know, some guys, no matter how highly recruited they are, they aren't day one plug-and-play star guys. That's just not how everybody works. Some guys need time and experience to learn things. And I think that's what we're seeing with Sage Ryan. Where's he going to play? Uh, probably your strong safety. Do you like him more around the line of scrimmage, or do you like him more in, in the back? Um, you know, I, he is a guy I like him kind of, you know, maybe toward the line of scrimmage a little bit better. I, I do have some concerns. I certainly don't want to see him in too much man coverage, even though there's an argument he was your best man cover corner last year after Zayed went down. Uh, I don't want to see too much of that because <laughs> just because it was your best in the defensive backfield last year doesn't mean it was anywhere near good. It still wasn't good enough. So I'd still like to see him doing more zone coverage, or if he's doing man coverage, do it on a tight end type role. Major Burns is back, and they've talked about moving him to the star spot that will be around the line of scrimmage a little bit more. What are your thoughts on, on Major Burns' impact on this defense? Yeah, I like that role that they're moving him into because the, the, the honest truth is last year he was a liability on those deep zone coverages. Uh, just couldn't seem to keep up with guys and make the play. This star position is kind of like a, a rover in a, in a 4-4 defense where it's a hybrid between a linebacker and a safety, you know, it, it, it's a guy who they want to have some man cover skills for, you know, maybe slide over and cover the slot if need be, or tight ends preferably, or even running backs out of the backfield. <laughs> but it's also a guy that they need to, you know, have some muscle behind them and be able to step up in the box and, and make a tackle if they need him to. And I, I like that role for him. I really do think that's a good way to use what Major Burns brings to the table. My, I've thought about pass rush with this team, and the best way to help a secondary out would be to get to the quarterback pretty quickly. How do you feel about LSU's ability to rush the passer? Ooh, Hunt. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know if you've been watching a lot of these practice clips, but this offensive line's been getting the best of this defensive line all spring. Um, and I don't see any Glenn Dorsey – popping in the transfer portal, portal to help fix that issue. I mean, I, I, I know they're going to get better coaching and they should improve as time goes on, but I, I think the harsh reality is this defensive line will be the weakness of the team, uh, particularly inside a defensive tackle where you don't have much coming back, although you are adding the guy from Wisconsin to, to bolster some depth there. But, I mean, it's just been rough, and you're watching, you know, sh uh, uh, Sean Washington's a guy you brought in, highly recruited guy, went to Georgia, didn't cut it, <clears throat> goes to JUCO and here ends up at LSU. And you see in practice uh, yesterday, Ben Bordelon just took him to the woodshed. <laughs> I mean, um, it, I, I think uh, the honest truth is what I'm seeing right now, this pass rush could use some work. Uh, they're going to have to blitz if they want to get some pressure on the quarterback. So that is unfortunately – uh, the same combination we saw last year where you have a struggling secondary. How do you help out a struggling secondary? You get a pass rush. Oh, by the way, your defensive line is also woefully struggling. So you can't get a pass rush. And that's why you give up 55 points to Ole Miss. Um, I, I think the secondary is going to be improved from what we saw last year. I, I don't really see much to tell me that the defensive line will be improved from last year. That paints a daunting pic uh, picture, Bryson, because like if you can't stop the run or get any any, any pressure on the quarterback, it just makes life really really difficult. I, I so it sounds to me like you're 
you're looking at this and going, this this is going to be really tough to fix. I mean, am I reading too much into it? Um, I, I think I think the linebackers are the strength of this defense. I really like what I'm seeing out of those guys. I do think the secondary is going to be improved, but I just I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I mean, I'm going to keep on watching. Ideally, the concept is is that you paid millions of dollars to improve your defensive line, brought in two of the best defensive line coaches in the country. Ideally, you see improvement as time goes on. I'm not, you know, <clears throat> the sky is not falling in my opinion yet. There's plenty of time to sit back, react, and see how this team develops over the off season. Who knows? Maybe the time fall camp comes around, the defensive line looks like a bunch of studs out there. But I'm just telling you what I'm seeing right now doesn't give me too much optimism on that defensive line. Now, let me also put a positive spin on it. Offensive line is really good. Yeah. DJ Chester, he's gelling very well with that first team offense, much much better than I would have expected. So the good news is it's not like you have an average offensive line out there that, you know, getting the best of you. It, this is going to be one of the best offensive lines, if not the best offensive line in the country. So that is the silver lining to everything I'm talking about. Maybe – Maybe they are good. They're just not great like that unit is. You mentioned linebacker being the strength. We know Perkins. We know Penn. Saw some here and there of, of Whit Weeks. Will we see more of him this year? Um, I think you'll see more. I think he'll be the first linebacker coming off the bench. But, I mean, their primary defense very much so looks like this this four two five look with a star, uh, star linebacker DB out there, and that's going to be major burn. Uh, I don't see them, you know, putting Harold Perkins in that spot or anything like that. Uh, but the, the Weeks brothers seem to be doing a good job on that second team defense of, of cleaning up what's there. I, I do think they have some good depth linebackers. And I'll be shocked if uh, Whit Weeks doesn't get rotated in more. But the fact of the matter is I, I, I don't see him being a starter yet in this defensive coordination. Now, if they mix it up and roll to a 4-3, Obviously, he's out there on the field. Um, or whatever, you know, goal line set, that kind of stuff, you're going to see him out there. I don't think this is a guy who's going to have a clean jersey at the end of the games this year. I see a few pair of cleats out there in the parking lot, 25% off. You want me to earmark a couple for you? You're good. Yeah, give me some of, like, don't give me the lineman cleats. I've worn too many of those. I like to cut the grass in a good pair of receiving cleats. You good. Know what you're going to show off that speed. And not the land shark feet. <laughs> you're not, if you give me a land shark, I'm offended at your. I need real spikes. All right, Preston, we appreciate it. Have a great weekend. All right, hon. Take it easy. He's Preston Guy, TigerBait.com. For all your LSU football needs, head over to TigerBait.com. He, Mike Scarborough, Buddy Sanji, the whole crew over there do a uh, do a wonderful job, and we appreciate Preston for jumping on each and every Friday. We'll come back and talk some baseball. Chris Demui's next on the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. ESPN Bet is ready to take you through all the huge sports moments this spring. The exclusive sports book of ESPN has it all including offers and promotions from Scott Van Pelt and Stephen A. Smith. From the playoff intensity to getting out on the links and out to the ballpark, there's no better time to be a sports fan. Sign up today. New users get $100 in bonus bets for making any sportsbook bet. That's really simple. Make one sportsbook bet, $5, $10, $20, whatever you want, $100 right into your account if you're a new user. Download ESPN Bet today. What a play. Must be 21 or older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. In partnership with LeBears Lake Charles, terms and conditions apply. See app for details. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge.
on Monday's OTB. Did the Tigers manage to take the series from Vandy? Plus, the latest from LSU spring ball. And we continue to get you ready for the Saints draft. And a brand new edition of Weekend Winners. Off the bench, 7 to 10 a.m., 104.5 ESPN. You're listening to The Hunt Palmer Show. Brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Fried Fish and Shrimp. We're here at Red Stick Sports on a gorgeous Friday in the capital city. I'm looking just outside this window. I've got one rack here with everything on it. It's $3. It's got one rack here, men's apparel 50% off. One rack here, Adidas fleece apparel 75% off. There's a huge barrel of baseball bats, 50% off. Got to get on by here to their annual sidewalk sale. It is today and tomorrow here at Red Stick Sports on Essen. Time to head out to the Jim's Firearms Hotline. That's where we find our guy Chris Demui, Tiger National Champ at Southpaw, and a guest every single Friday with us. Demui, how are you? Doing good, Hunt. How you doing, buddy? Doing well. Uh, better after last night. Uh, I saw you react on Monday after the Tigers dropped to Southern, <laughs> saying that that's uh, it's a heavy crown. Uh, what was your reaction to what you'd seen over the past, I guess, five days with the trip to Fayetteville and that one against Southern on Monday? It, I think it was a little concerning, and maybe that was a little overreaction on my point. But, I, uh, you know, just like all the fans out there listening and you, you know, it, it's frustrating, right, when um, Southern, you know, got a good program and they practice and they get scholarships and all that stuff too. And baseball is better now at all levels, but it's just when they, you know, when they come back from uh, getting swept at Arkansas and you kind of throw up a dud like that, it's just frustrating as an alumnus or as a fan, you know, and uh, I just kind of voiced some of that on Twitter, but they still have time to turn around and, and uh, you know, you saw some of that last night. So I really liked the way they came out last night. And when you looked at the stats, so after the weekend, you realize, that they weren't that far off if they could improve in certain areas. And one thing I noticed last night was if the pitchers eliminate silly walks, leadoff walks, 0-2 to walk, two-out walks, you know, things like that, they'll be in a much better position moving forward. And obviously the hitters have to take care of some things too. But uh, just frustrated after the fail of the weekend. You thought they may have gotten one up there for sure. But uh, it was a good start last night for the weekend. It was. Did you hear some of Jay Johnson's comments about – attitude and obviously taking the phones away has gotten a lot of headlines and all that kind of stuff. Are you a little concerned with the, the overall state of the team, maybe mentally? Uh, I don't know. Last night I think showed me a lot. Yeah. Obviously they have to back it up with a good performance tonight, but I was worried about it. But that's, that's the thing I kind of kept reminding myself is obviously I've been in a ton of locker rooms, but I'm not in that locker room, right? So you don't know the mindset of those guys. You don't know what the leaders behind the teams are saying with those guys. But it's also, it, it, it's just, you know, these young guys, you know, in transfers, you just come off a national championship, so you think it may be a little easier than what it is. Or you can just roll out the jerseys and beat a team like Southern, and it just goes to show you got to go prepared every game, every night, because people play better when they face LSU, you know. So uh, I, I, I didn't get a chance. I've been away on business. I'm in an airport right now uh, <laughs> to, read a lot of, to read a lot of Jay's stuff. But, uh, I mean, he's really good at this stuff. And, but it's time for the seniors and the leaders in – you know, outfielders, hitters, and pitchers, those guys got to step up and start leading by example, you know. Luke Coleman led last night was really, really good for at least the first five innings of his outing. I'm curious your thoughts on him because usually this day and age, if you've got big strikeout numbers like he does and he had 10 more last night, he's second in the SEC to Hagen Smith, I start thinking 97, 98, <laughs> hammer slider, and he's throwing 91, but he's, he's dominating at 91. What does that look like to you, a former pitcher? I think he just pitches. You know, almost like a lost art nowadays when you see guys, you know, I, was, I caught some of the game and saw some of the highlights last night. You know, Vandy's got running guys out there throwing 97 to 99, you know, and they're just fastballs, fastballs. But Holman pitches. You know, I'm old enough to remember all the guys from the Braves. I grew up on those guys and, and some of the Red Sox pitchers and guys I used, I used to like to watch in college. And he changes speed. He hits spots. He mixes eye levels. He can throw any pitch at any time. That's not just an exaggeration on that part. And so as a hitter, you have to respect everything. When he's punching out guys 3-2 on sliders and curveballs at the top of the zone, at the bottom of the zone, that just shows you they're on their toes. And they really just don't know what's coming. And as a pitching coach, I would imagine it's really fun for Nate Yeski to call pitches. So it's, you know, you may be seeing him get it. Now, the other thing with him, though, he doesn't. his margins are a lot finer, right? So when guys see him through the order – two, maybe three times, that's when you start to see him get in a little bit of trouble in the SEC just because he can't reach back and throw 96, you know. So um, 
And that's why you've seen him struggle sometimes when his breaking stuff doesn't work because his fastball is not super overpowering. So, but I like I like the bounce back. I like the fact that he had no walks. To me, that was the most impressive thing. He cut out the walks. Yeah, unless you only issued one walk last night in those nine innings, Griffin Herring had had the one. Uh, but Herring's kind of blossomed into a star. He's the go-to reliever at this point. What have you seen from him in his second year here in Baton Rouge? Just kind of, he's matured. You know, he kind of had some bumps in the road earlier in this year, but out from the past couple outings, he's looked phenomenal. You know, he it looks like his velocity is maybe ticked up just a little bit, but he's going to be 90 to 94, and that slider is a wipeout slider. And he just pounds those righties in. That's what I love. He has an aggressive mindset. Kind of him and Gavin Guidry have the same type of mindset when they're out there. But the fact that he can extend like he did at Arkansas, like he did last night, it really – I don't think people realize how much he saved the bullpen last night. Like he didn't just get you five outs and then all of a sudden he starts getting hit and you got to use Ackenhausen and Guidry. You know, those guys are fresh now. Vandy hasn't seen them. So, Terry, I mean – some people may be clamoring for him to start, and I think it's warranted. But, I mean, you take him out of the bullpen when he can give you three or four scoreless when you need a win. It's a tough decision, but he is a massive piece of this pin moving forward. Huge, huge, huge. Another left-hander gauge jump will get the ball tonight. I mean, I realize the competition was not great, but he did not give up an earned run in the non-conference, but he hasn't been awesome when the competition has stepped up in SEC play, just kind of average. Uh, what does he need to do to be better in the SEC? I think he's, they got to figure out something second time through the order, you know, and I have this theory and this may be a crackpot theory and maybe I'm reaching it's, um, it's my left-handed pitching theory. All the lefties we have are the exact same. They're all carbon copies of each other. They're all 90 to 93 with a fastball slider. And like, that's it. No change up, no curveballs. Kate Anderson's got a curveball, but everybody else is the same. So the fact that Herring <laughs> went four and went three and whatever he went last night and now jump is coming back with the same exa- exact stuff. I wonder if Vanderbilt's going to feel really comfortable seeing jump. Now, he can dial it up to 95, 96 at times, but it's the same stuff. So I have a theory to where sometimes these lefties get hit later in the weekend because the other team has seen three of those guys run out on the mound. But I think for him, I would love to see a third pitch if he has it. And the other thing is just staying out of trouble. It seems like around the fourth or fifth, he just finds a way to kind of get himself into trouble. So uh, I would look for him. My biggest thing is can he get through the fifth relatively clean, and, and that'll be a good time for LSU, uh, I think, tonight. LSU came into this game, the game last night 13th out of 14 SEC teams in team batting average in league games. I realize Arkansas is not the most fun place to go hit uh, with those guys that goes as pitching, but are you concerned about the offense, or do you think that this is going to be uh, a good SEC offense? I mean, I'm concerned. I think, like I told you, like I mentioned about the, the pitchers and their walks, that's a concern, but I looked at some of the hitter stats, and you may have talked about this uh you know, the past couple of days, but you know, when you're striking out about 20% of the time, I think that's, that's a massive number. And, and last year they had walks and strikeouts were pretty close. And this year they're not close in terms of the hitters overall. And, you know, Jay wants to walk and get on base. I think it is a concern for me moving forward. I mean, I think for them to score that many runs last night is, is a little bit of a rarity this year. You know, they kind of seem like they average about four or five runs, but when they strike out that much as a team, it's just tough for them to, to sustain innings. You're not really going to see them get four or five hits in a row. They're going to need some help. And another thing I'd like to see, I wish they were more aggressive on the bases, straight steals or hit and run to where, you know, you got one out, but you move a guy into scoring position. Now a single can score in it because you just can't play with this team as of yet. You can't play station to station and ball and just hope you're going to hit three and four, you know, three run home runs every couple of innings. I think they just strike out too much to sustain those type of innings, you know, over a nine-inning ball game. That's, that's my opinion. I, I mean, I, I don't disagree. I would love to see him be a little bit more aggressive, but the problem that I run into here is White can't steal a base, Jones can't steal a base, Neal can't steal a base, Travinsky can't steal a base, Braswell doesn't run great, Kling's never on base, and and so it's like <laughs> uh, it's there just aren't a lot of guys in the lineup. I mean, Bingham runs a little, can run a little bit, Milam can run a little bit, but it's just it's not the most athletic group. No, no, you're right. But I think the way he sets the lineup up, like last night, I mean, I, w- I was working late last night, but I caught it to where Braswell was on first and maybe in the eighth or ninth. No, not the ninth, obviously. The eighth, I think, and Kling hits into a double play. But right there, to me, I'm thinking, why don't you at least maybe put – it's like a 1-1 count, I think. Put Braswell in motion. Maybe you stay out of that double play. Maybe Kling finds, you know, the four hole. And now you're looking at first and third. Or you're looking at, you know, man on second with one or two outs. I forget the situation. Just – you're right, but I think if you stack the order, 
you know, if you got Pearson in front of Stravinsky and he gets on, you can do some different things to where it may not have to be straight fields. But I, I think if you're hoping to get three or four hits in a row every couple innings, I just don't think it's going to happen with this team. To me, that's why they hit so many solo home runs. Nobody's ever on base. So they got to get on base to produce runs. And, and sometimes you just got to be aggressive and make things happen as opposed to trying to wait for things to happen. Obviously, uh, everything depends on how things go tonight, and I think they'll use whoever they need to use to try to win the game, whether it's Hagenhausen, Guidry, even Hurd. But how do you feel about a third starter? Do you want to send Hurd back out there? Do you think Javen Coleman? Do you want to send Ackenhausen out there? Like, how do you who, – who do you think gives LSU a chance to, to lengthen a little bit? Because you're seeing it Vanderbilt's best pitcher on Saturday. Yeah, that's a great question. I think it may just depend on who's first in relief tonight. You know, it seems like Jay, like, if jumps up, maybe Hurd is first in relief with the whole lefty-righty thing to give him a different look. And then if Ackenhausen has to close out the game, then you're probably looking at a, a Coleman again to start. But I agree with you. I think it's just the third starter's up in the air. It's just going to depend on who he has to use to close this game out. I mean, I'm fine with in, any of them because I think on Saturday it's just going to be pitched by committee again. And whoever's fresh, you know, and they're just going to go until they think they get tired or until they run up their pitch limit and they're not effective anymore, then they're just going to sub in the next new arm. I think it may be like that for a little while. But I wouldn't be surprised to see Hurd come in after jump just to give uh, Vandy a different look tonight, you know, because I think if you bring in Ackenhausen after jump, he's great, but he's the same guy. Yeah. So maybe he closes it out, and then you got Gidry for two and a third, you know, to, on, on Saturday, and you try to get two out of Coleman. You know, it's mix and match, right, just to try to count out and, and try to get to that game with a chance to win it. How do we so, feel about Kate Anderson? He came out like a house on fire and then got into SEC play, and he's gotten hit a little bit. Yeah, I think that it's got to put him back in the midweek and let him have some success. You know, I, I missed um, – I was out of town uh, on Monday, so I missed his outing. Huh. Um, None of it was yeah, good. I, None of it was good for me. Yeah. <laughs> all, all I know is I looked down at my phone and said 3 nothing against Southern, and I was like, what happened early, like in the second, you know. So they just got to find a way to get him back on track. You know, um, I don't think they pushed him too fast because these kids want to – when they come in as freshmen, they're highly touted, right? They want to pitch and they want to have success, and that's what they expect. And so, um, putting back in the midweek, just getting some confidence again, you know, hopefully get him up to two or three clean innings and get him out, and then you can maybe roll him back out there on the weekend. But I think, I think what you're starting to see now, I know the third starter is up in the air right now, but you're really starting to see him pare down to about eight to ten guys. Yeah. And I think, and I think we've talked about this and probably even text about it, but I think moving forward, as you know, that's really all you need as long as those guys are good. And I think he's trying to find, you know, probably two or three more guys that he can really trust. And um, But I think with Anderson, you got to put him back in the midweek just to let him regain some confidence and kind of lengthen him out a little bit. Think they can get one of the next two? Definitely, yeah. I got I, I felt great last weekend of them getting one and it didn't happen. But I don't know. I, I wouldn't – look, it, it would surprise a lot of people, but I wouldn't be surprised if they sweep. I mean, if they have a great game today and they got a ton of momentum, I know Vandy's stud is uh, Carter Holton's on Saturday, but uh, maybe they can get some mojo back because um, you know next weekend I'll let you be up there next weekend. That's going to be that's going to be a tough one, you know. But then it really lessens up on the back half. But uh, yeah, I think they get two this weekend for sure. That would be quite nice. Have a great weekend. Safe travels home. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it, Hunt. He's Chris Demui, former Tiger left-hander, with us every single Friday. Our Friday shows are brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. We're here at Red Stick Sports for their annual sidewalk sale. Unbelievable deals everywhere. All their LSU stuff, which is all over the walls. Got the bar hat right here on my set here. That was just classic in the 90s. Everybody had one of those when I was in middle school. I might pick one up on the way out of here. And if I do, 25% off because everything LSU in this store is 25% off. Get on by here on Essen Lane. We'll come back. There's a former Tiger who's being rumored to the New Orleans Saints. Who is it? Does it make sense? That's next. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Boudreaux's electric. Don't really have to worry about power outages today, I wouldn't think. Perfect weather, but we do have to worry about power outages, unfortunately, because we know a storm season's always right around the corner, and sometimes we just get those nasty summer showers. It'll knock your power right on out. You can avoid that. Give yourself the peace of mind to know your power's not going out because of the folks at Boudreaux's Electric. They're a certified Generac dealer. They're a premier Generac generator dealer. That means they're in the top 3% nationwide. They'll come out to your home or your business. They'll assess your needs. What do you need powered in the event that the electricity goes out? They'll get you that customized uh, generator that specifies to your needs. 
they'll go install it. You're not going to get some contractor that comes out there. It's a full-time Boudreaux Electric employee that will come to your house, do the installation with the finest in copper and wiring, and most of that installation is going to be done underground so that it looks aesthetically pleasing. Nobody wants a huge honking generator outside of the house. People take pride in what the house looks like. They know that at Boudreaux Electric, and they will get you taken care of. New Gonzalez store is opening up very soon. You will not want to miss that. Great deals are to follow. Give them a call, 985-397-1562. 985-397-1562. That is Boudreaux Electric. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. project with John Deere deals by sunshine whether you're working hard or playing hard our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com REC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. REC, your number one park system in the nation. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today. Or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. Charles Hanniger, join us for the Monday edition of Live at Lunch from Walk-Ons in Brulee. We'll take a look back at the weekend in the Final Four and LSU series with Vanderbilt. Live at Lunch, 11 a.m. Monday from Walk-Ons in Brulee on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. <laughs> You are now listening to The Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp, on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Locking down the middle of the day. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios, this is Hunt Palmer. This is The Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Fried Fish and Shrimp. Closing up hour number one here from Red Stick Sports on Essen. Saw uh, a piece over on Saints Wire uh, about a potential free agent target for the New Orleans Saints with some roots here in Baton Rouge. And that is Jamal Adams. Now, I'll be honest with you. I think 
everyone's got this is the best I've ever seen at that. This is the guy's the best I've ever seen at that. There are some positions where I've got some conviction and some that I, I don't in LSU history. Like, I couldn't tell you who LSU's best cornerback ever was. I thought Patrick Peterson was awesome. I thought Morris Claiborne was awesome. Derek Stingley's freshman year was absolutely fantastic. I mean, there's been a run of great corners at LSU. I, I couldn't tell you definitively that's the best one. I couldn't give you a best wide receiver that I've seen at LSU. Jamar Chase was fantastic. So was Odell Beckham. Dwayne Bowe was insane. Josh Reed was – I mean, like, I, I can't tell you who the best wide receiver is. Um, but I do on defense. Like, I have a, a best defensive lineman. Glenn Dorsey's the best one I've ever seen. I do have a linebacker. I think Devin White's the best LSU linebacker I've ever seen. Kevin Minner was fantastic. Brady James was unbelievable. They've had, they've had Kevin – I mean, they've had great linebackers, but Kevin, Devin White for me is the best. And it's safety, although Grant Delpit and Chad Jones were fantastic. To me, LaRon Landry – Jamal Adams is the best safety I've seen at LSU. And for that reason, he was a top-five pick in the NFL draft, and he was there in, in, in it for terrible Jets teams, and then he went to Seattle, and the bottom fell out there. Um, and he's now looking for a home. And he's 29 years old, which is not the end of the world. He's younger than Tyron, certainly. Um, but he has been unavailable basically for three years. He played nine games last year for Seattle. He played one game for Seattle the year before that. And then the two years previous to that, he only played 12. So he has not played a full season since 2018. I don't know if this makes a ton of sense for New Orleans. You've got Tyron Matthew. You've moved on from Marcus May. You feel like Jordan Howden is growing into being a solid safety. You like Jonathan Abram. You're going to bring him back, and he can certainly play some safety for you. I certainly would not offer Jamal Adams multiple years on a contract. There's just no way you can look at the last basically four seasons and suggest you're going to pay Jamal Adams, especially at the all-pro level that he played at early in his career. He was a second-team all-pro in 2018. He was a first-team all-pro in 2019, and he was a second-team all-pro in 2020. But since then, he's been basically a shell of himself due to injuries. And I just don't think it's a great idea to bring him in. Now, that being said, I am championing all these one-year contracts the Saints are being rumored to have have invested and the ones they are actually investing. I I champion the Chase Young contract. I know the neck injury is a little bit scary. It's one year. And let's be pretty pretty honest. Like, the Saints don't look like a team that's going anywhere far this coming fall. They could prove me wrong, and I'd love to talk about it. But I I don't see them going a long way this fall. So any one-year deal is not really going to hurt you. The only real priority I have for the Saints in this offseason is don't hamstring 2025 and 2026 with some stupid decisions trying to make 2024 something that it's not. That is my primary focus for New Orleans. They have done this for so long, and at times it was the right thing to do. We all understand that right now it is not that time, and they haven't done it. They have not dropped an anchor on any of these long-term deals in this offseason. They've handed out some very judicious one-year contracts, some with some risk. Chase Young certainly is a risk, and Jamal Adams would be a huge risk. It's significantly less a risk if it's only a one-year deal. You want to bring in a veteran, see if he can rediscover some of that all-pro ability and he can play 15, 16, 17 games on a one-year deal? Okay. I just start to wave the flag and go nuts when you look at a three-year deal that you're going to end up backloading and costing yourself a bajillion dollars for a guy who's about to enter his 30s. Don't love it. As much as I love the New Orleans Saints bringing back some LSU guys, I thought the the first regular season game with Jarvis Landry and Tyron Matthew when they did the Houdat chant was electrifying. Two guys from right here in South Louisiana played at LSU. I realize Jamal is a Texas guy, but LSU guy. And that's incredible for our state to have guys that played at LSU go play for the Saints. I'm just not sold. Jamal Adams is worth a shot at this point because he's played in 10 games in the last two years. Just my two cents on Jamal Adams headed to the Saints. If you're looking for Saints content, you can always catch it on our YouTube channel, uh, Hunt on Saints. Appreciate subscriptions to that, likes, comments, all that. Helps get our content in front of as many eyes as possible, so we appreciate you doing that. We're here at Red Stick Sports. Their annual sidewalk sale deals everywhere. 30% off bats. Got a youth uh, baseball player in your uh, family? Hook him up with a bat. We're back after Sports Center with Hour 2. You here. are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play. 
with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Gulf Coast Bank & Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank & Trust, the bank that cares about you. This is SportsCenter. I'm Doug Brown. USC freshman Bronny James will enter the NBA draft, but also enter the transfer portal to keep his college eligibility. His first year with the Trojans was derailed by treatment for a congenital heart defect after a cardiac arrest last summer. The deadline to withdraw from the draft is May 31st. The women's Final Four takes the floor tonight in Cleveland. 
ESPN's Chenea Gwumake says the stars of the women's game aren't the teams anymore. It was the Yukons, it was the Stanfords, it was the Tennessees, it was the Baylors. The stars now are the players. And I think that shows that the game is in a very healthy place. We're talking about Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, even freshmen like Juju Watkins, Hannah Hidalgo. The list goes on and on. And I think that's why we love the game and where it is today. Chenea Gwumake on Get Up. South Carolina plays NC State, then Iowa meets UConn. Coverage starts at 7 Eastern on ESPN. Our Adam Schefter reports Panthers defensive lineman Derek Brown signs a four-year, $96 million extension, $63 million guaranteed. Feeling great starts with a great shave, and great shaves start with Barbasol Shaving Cream. That's Barbasol Shaving Cream, an American classic for over 100 years. Close Shave America, Close Shave Barbasol. Ladies and gentlemen, may I direct your attention to something quite extraordinary. Now, the Hunt Palmer Show. The Hunt Palmer Show on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Brought to you by Cork's Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios, this is Hunt Palmer. Number two, final hour of the week here on the Hunt Palmer Show. We are here at Red Stick Sports for their annual sidewalk show. My producer, Bo Wegman, just picked up a volleyball for the daughter. It's like, what, 25% off, 30% off? There we go. It's got great deals everywhere, all over the store and outside in the tent here at Red Stick Sports. Highly, highly would suggest you stop on by today or tomorrow for this sale. You will not want to miss it. And we always enjoy coming on over here. We were here last year for opening day of Major League Baseball. Right before, went over to the box and saw Chase Dolander and Paul Skeens pitch on a Thursday night. Uh, that was a good one. LSU won that one. Jordan Thompson, a big three-run double into the right center field gap. Maybe a little more of that tonight as LSU and Vanderbilt play. We'll talk LSU and Vanderbilt a little bit later in the hour. But I want to start uh, the second hour here with a little basketball because uh, Miami Man got some really good news yesterday with the commitment of Victorious Miller. That name sounds familiar, and you really don't forget the name Victorious. Let's just be very honest. Uh, LSU was very much in the mix to sign Victorious Miller in the early signing period. He was rumored and, and speculated to be committing to LSU, but in the end, he ended up signing with Oregon. Uh, I think NIL probably had a large amount to do with that. Uh, Victorious does come uh, from a, a famous family. He's the nephew of Master P, the son of uh, Vaishon Miller, better known as Silk the Shocker. Um, and he was thought to come to LSU because there's some family ties here in the state of Louisiana, but he decided to go to Oregon. Now all of a sudden he's decided to back out of his letter of intent. Oregon let him out of that letter of intent, and he's coming to LSU. He is a 6'5 shooting guard um, who's from North Hollywood, California, but ended up at Compass Prep in uh, Arizona because you could get IL dollars <laughs> in Arizona. It's not against the law there like it is uh, in uh, in other places. So uh, that was why he, he went to prep school, and he's a really good player. Um, on three has him ranked as a top 70 player, 67th in the country. 24-7's got him at 58th. ESPN ranks him as the 41st best player player in the country. He's a four-star shooting guard at 6'5", and what this does is it really puts a nice signing class together for Matt McMahon. You look at Curtis Givens as a, a 6'2 point guard who I really, really like. I think he's going to be a really good player at the college level. You bring in Victorious Miller as a, a shooting two guard. Miller is not maybe the quickest player I've ever seen, but he's 6'5", he's ranging, he can really, really shoot. So you've got a backcourt of Curtis Givens and Victorious Miller and then you bring in Robert Miller, who's a 6'10 big that's got some real upside as well. That's that's a really strong recruiting class. There, the days of signing five or six high school players is pretty much gone. You're just not going to do that. You're going to go get transfers to fill out a lot of your roster, but it does help to continue to supplement that roster with high-level high school players that you can – develop. They've done that with Tyrell Ward and with Jalen Reed. Uh, they hope to do that with Mike Williams as well. And then you look at this class. This is a top 25, top 20 high school signing class for Matt McMahon, which doesn't mean what it used to because everybody was trying to do it via the high school ranks, and now not everyone is trying to do it via the high school ranks, but it's it's a solid start. And the best way I know to, to build a program is to recruit. Yeah, you got to X and O them, but there's, it, it's players. Kirby Smart has a great quote. I use it all the time. It's, it's players, not plays. And Kirby Smart recruits like crazy, and that's why they win a ton of games. you got to recruit the high school level and the transfer portal. So as I look at LSU's basketball roster going into the 2024-2025 season that we all feel like is an important year for Matt McMahon, 
the excuses are done. Not that he's making any. He's very clearly not making any excuses. But there were some early. There are none now. It's time to go. It's time to be a threat to make the tournament, getting into the tournament, try to win some games there. You should be a high-level basketball program moving into next year. And as I look at the point guard spot, you've got Mike Williams back. You do lose Trey Hannibal and you do lose Jalen Cook. But you've got Mike Williams back, who I thought did some really nice things as a freshman. And then you bring in Curtis Givens, who, like I just said, I'm very high on Curtis Givens. Huge basketball IQ, incredibly smooth with the basketball, can really handle it, control tempo, understands how to see the floor. Like I, I think Curtis Givens is going to be a great college player. I like what you've got there at, at point guard, even though you're a little bit young. Cam Carter has come in as a transfer. He's a Donaldsonville native who went to Oak Hill, went to Mississippi State, went to Kansas State, talked about him committing er, last week. Um, he's kind of a, a fill-in for Jordan Wright, down maybe an inch or two. Um, but a guy that, that can score a little bit for you. That's a guy that's probably going to average 13, 14 points a game. He's not a great three-point shooter, but he can score from the two-guard spot. And you've also got Victorious Miller sliding in as a two-guard as well, and I think Miller's going to be a really good shooter. I, I, I'm, he's got to gain some weight, and he's not the quickest guy on the floor, but I think he can score for you at this level. I'm not sure what the future holds for Carlos Stewart. Um, we'll see uh, if he's going to be back at LSU next year. The jury's still out there. I think probably not, um, but we'll see. Uh, at small forward, you got Tyrell Ward, who is proven to be a knockdown shooter, needs to add a little bit more to his game in terms of putting the ball on the floor and maybe distributing a little bit, but he did take strides. And if he develops as much from year two to year three as he did from year one to year two, you've got a really nice player there at, at the small forward spot. So that's kind of where your backcourt is right now. Mike Williams, Curtis Givens, Cam Carter, Victorious Miller, and Tyrell Ward. I'd like another just absolute dead-eye shooter, if you can find one somewhere in the transfer portal, somebody that can shoot 42% from three. That's hard to find, but you can find it. It's, it's out there, and if LSU can find an, an absolute score, and I think you've got guys that create with Williams and Givens and Carter and, and even maybe Miller off the bounce a little bit. That's There's a need there for an absolute shooter. He can play the three. He can play the two. He can be 6'7". He can be 6'4". He can be 6'2". Somebody that can fill it up is, is what they need. Then you go to the front court. You've got Jalen Reed, who you've got coming back as a, as a power forward. Uh, he needs to take another step in his game. He shot it a little bit better from the three-point line, did a better job of driving and not turning it over and finishing at the rim. Him. There were some games where he looked great, some games where he looked a little bit overmatched. Need him to, to kind of develop. There's something to be said, as I say a lot, for being the oldest guy on the floor instead of the youngest guy on the floor. And he now becomes a junior where you're one of the oldest guys on the floor. Uh, I like uh, I like Jalen Reed's upside. You bring in Robert Miller there as well as a freshman who's a four-star, 6'10", um, and can play. And then you got Corey Chest, who redshirted this year, also was a, a four-star player. I'm curious as to why he redshirted. I really don't know the story there. Uh, obviously, they didn't feel like he was ready to help. I don't know a ton about his game other than that he's big and he's got he's 6'8 and he's got a good a good bit of athleticism to him. But that's, that's where you start at the four, and you've got to go get a five. You've got to replace the, the K.J. Williams, Will Baker five. You need rim protection and guys that can handle themselves down on the block. Most teams in the SEC went to the transfer portal and found guys that can do this whether it's Henry Coleman over at Texas A&M, whether it's Janai Broom at Auburn. Florida, as you'll remember, had Colin Castleton that was a transfer from, from Michigan. Um, you've had two transfers at Ole Miss uh, last year that, that came in and, and were really good shot blockers. These guys are findable in the transfer portal. LSU needs a seven-footer who can play on the block. Baker was a pretty skilled offensive player. Um a great ball handle. We can shoot a little bit and use both hands. Um, you need somebody that can affect the game at the rim. LSU did not really have that, and they do. So you need threes and fives is, is where LSU needs, and they've got four or five spots left to fill, and you're going to do that in the transfer portal. But I, I like um, some of the bones of this roster. You, you, need, you need to find, and this is hard to do, but you need to find a pro. They, they exist. They're out there, I promise. You need to find a pro. And I, I know that they're 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 looking around, and I don't know that that Sears, the transfer from, uh, uh, now I'm blanking on where he's the transfer from, left-handed guard. Um, he's a, he's a really good shooter. Now he's a little bit undersized; he's like six feet tall, but he's a really good shooter. That's a guy that I would love to add uh, to this mix as a veteran. You need to find a five. That's something LSU's got to do. They've got room to do it on the roster, but they're doing a pretty good job on the high school trail. It just needs to start to pay some dividends next year. It's a big year for Matt McMahon, and that was a big get for him in Victorious Miller. So you've got three top top 100 players in the country 
in this signing class in the high school ranks. It's not everything because you're going to build this roster with a bunch of older players, but it's a really good step in the right direction, I think, and a good get for Matt Man. Victorious Miller commits to LSU. He'll sign coming up in the next signing period. We're here at Red Stick Sports. Our Friday show is brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Swing on by for a late lunch or grab some dinner tonight if you're headed out to the box and want to tailgate. Great, great option is some awesome crispy fried catfish. Fantastic jumbo golf shrimp, the crispy shoestring fries. Got awesome some uh, rolls. They've also got baked potatoes you can top with crawfish etouffee. They got it all going on there at Cork's Drive on through or eating their newly renovated dining room. Really great spot there on government between Foster and Jefferson. We still got plenty to do here on a Friday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show. Uh, let's come back and uh, talk a little bit about the Final Four. That's next. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. One Bath in Closets. One Bath in Closets.com is the website. David Duvall and his team, 30 years redesigning and remodeling bathrooms and closets. Safety is a big, big issue in the bathroom, especially as you or someone that you love ages. If you need some help in the bathroom, David Vaughn and his team do that kind of stuff all the time. They can put in non-slip floors. They can put in guardrails and handrails next to the toilet and shower areas. They can do the walk-in tub for you. That's an awesome convenience for those that are, are aging. Makes things a lot safer as well. If you want a bench put in your shower, they can do that as well over at One Bath and Closets. It all starts with a free consultation. They'll kind of tell you how things work there. They're going to put a date there, and they're going to make sure that their project is complete, and they're going to do it right the first time and leave the competition behind. Check out that free consultation as well as testimonials from satisfied clients, and some great photos of their awesome work. It's all there at OneBathAndClosets.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the JimsFirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the JimsFirearms.net hotline on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. REC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. REC, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques, Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money 
They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. Join me for a Friday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show presented by Cork's Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. We'll be at Red Stick Sports for their tent sale. Is LSU 2-8 and eight, or are they 3-7? and seven? We're talking about it. Hunt Palmer Show, 1-3 to three weekdays, 104.5 ESPN, Baton Rouge. This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. You know, I'm sitting here at Red Stick Sports, and I'm watching the Cubbies. They started up at 120 today, and they're playing the Dodgers at Wrigley. It's not fair that the Dodgers have Mookie Betts leading off, Shohei Otani in the two-hole, and Freddie Freeman hitting third. That is not fair. That's like a billion MVPs in a row. I do like that their ownership spends a lot of money, and I like that the Cubs are up 5-2. to two. That's a good thing as well. We'll leave the Cubs talk right there. I want to get to the Final Four, which cranks up tomorrow uh, from out in the desert in Phoenix. And, man, does it prove to uh, – it, it looks like a really, really good uh, mat, set of matchups and, and potentially a, a ridiculously good final on Monday if the, uh, if the, the seeds hold. But – I want to talk about a couple of these two games, Connecticut and Alabama. I think a lot of you know a lot about both of those teams. UConn, obviously the defending national champions, they've really been the best team all year long. You can make an, a case for Houston at, at certain points, but Connecticut's been pretty pretty damn good really the entire way. And Bama has been interesting to watch. So for those of us that watch a lot of SEC basketball, like they've looked really, really good sometimes and really, really not sometimes. Um, Connecticut's been good all the time, though. <laughs> they have won their tournament games against Stetson, Northwestern, San Diego State, and Illinois by a total of 111 points. That's that's 27.8 points per game. And it's not like they beat one team by 50 and the other ones by 10. No, they're just winning all of them by 25, 30 points. Every single time they're going out there. They are the number one offensive efficiency team in the country. They are the number five defensive efficiency team in the country. Con- conversely, Bama is number three in the country in offensive efficiency. Purdue's second, by the way. The top three offensive efficiencies in the country are in the final four. But Bama's defensive efficiency is 262nd. There have been times where they just have not guarded. Now, that's been remedied in the NCAA tournament. They have been better on defense. But I think their best chance to beat Connecticut is to win a shootout. That, that's really the only way I can see Alabama getting this done. They had a stretch of SEC games where these were their point totals, and, and I'm sure you all remember this because LSU was involved in a couple of them, but they scored 109 on LSU, then 85 at Georgia, then 99 on Mississippi State, who plays slower than anybody in the conference, then 81 at Auburn, 109 at LSU, 100 on A&M, 98 on Florida, 95 on Kentucky, and 103 on Ole Miss. That's a nine-game stretch of conference play. That's half the straight, the the conference slate at 98 points per game. That's what they're going to try to do. They're going to try to score 95 points. I don't think they can do it, but I think that's their best path to victory. Now, we know Bama plays by their, their rules on offense. Only threes, layups, and free throws. Well, you can get threes against anybody. I don't care who you play. You can play the the Celtics, who are the best basketball team in the world right now. You can get threes. They may be a long way away, but you can get them up. Layups are tougher, and they're a lot tougher when you've got Donovan Klingon down on the block. He swatted eight shots against Northwestern and five more against Illinois. This is a UConn team that's ninth in the country in block percentage. It's just hard to score on them inside. I mean, Klingon's the, the main guy you got to deal with, but there are others that UConn has. And Bama doesn't have another pitch. Like, it's going to be threes and layups. They're not going to pull up from 10 feet all of a sudden and start shooting jump shots. They're going to the rim. And I'm just curious how that's going to go against a Connecticut team that defends the rim so well. This is a UConn team that's played great defense. It, it just doesn't seem like a great matchup there. The problem, on the other hand, that Bama's got, and this is on the defensive side of the floor, there is no one to take away on UConn's offense. Tristan Newton leads them at 15 points per game. Cam Spencer is second with 14.4. Alex Carban, 13.5. Donovan Klingon, 12.9. Stephen Castle, 10.7. All five of their starters 
average between 15 and 10.7. There are some teams where you can just try to neutralize the dude. Like Purdue has DJ uh, Moore to, to, to DJ Burns to deal with, and that's the main guy you've got to take away. That doesn't exist for UConn, and that's what makes them such a nightmare to deal with because anybody can score on any given possession. They don't necessarily have the ability to go for 38. Like Nobody on this team is just going to go absolutely bananas for UConn, but it's just a possession-by-possession thing where anybody on the floor is a threat. And for those of us that that really enjoy watching offensive uh, play calling in basketball, I I love that because it's the only way I was able to play. Every team I ever played on had, like, strict sets that we were in, like the Princeton offense, because we never had anybody that could win one-on-one. So we had to do it, you know, as in terms of a flow of an offense. UConn runs some stuff, man. I saw a, 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 a reel on Instagram that was captioned, like, try guarding this. And there were, there were like, four different dribble handoffs and stagger screens, and the, the ball was moving side to side. It's just they are so crisp and efficient with what they do under Danny Hurley, it is a pleasure to watch them play basketball. And, and it's it's not maybe as much fun as watching, like, Caitlin Clark go for 50 points, um, but it is fascinating to watch, and it's clinical. And it, it's just no one's dealing with it at this point. And I don't expect Alabama to. The, the number on this is 11.5. I would not feel comfortable taking Alabama. I just wouldn't. I, I – they have gotten dusted a few times. Now, they've played better on defense in this tournament, no doubt. But I just – UConn's too much. I think Purdue can play with them and will play with them if they get there. Unless Alabama just goes haywire from three, which is the obvious handicapping of this game, which is very possible. Like, Sears, Sears could score 35. Absolutely. I've seen it. But I just, I just don't see it. I think UConn's going to grind them down uh, and score too much. I think Alabama's going to try to race their way back into it with threes, maybe some long rebounds get into transition for UConn. I'm not screaming to hammer UConn and minus the points. I am I am screaming I'm not taking Bama in the points. Like, I, I, I can see it going the other way more closely than I can more, – more easily than I can see Alabama staying right there in it and having a real chance with 90 seconds left. I like UConn to, to take control of the basketball game. The other game, Purdue versus NC State. Purdue is number two in the country, as I mentioned, in offensive efficiency. Um, but there, there's a there's a method to beat them, and and I've I've seen it in the statistics that I, that I dug up today. Wisconsin beat them in the Big Ten tournament, and Zach Eady had 28 points on seven of 11 shooting, and he shot 19 free throws. He was 14 of 19 from the line. But nobody else on Purdue's team got in double figures that day. Ohio State beat Purdue in the regular season. Edie had 22 and 13, but no one else had over 12 points, and only one Boilermaker made a three-pointer that day. You have to know when you come out of the locker room and they tip that ball up that Zach Edie is going to get 25 points. He may get 33 points, and that's just part of the game. Purdue's other guys are the ones that are going to beat you. Braden Smith, 44% from three. Fletcher Lawyer, 44% from three. Mason Gillis, 48% from three. They got all these guys who can flat out stroke it from deep. Don't let them beat you if you're NC State. You've got to find – Edie's going to have 31 points and 16 rebounds. He's going to shoot 17 free throws. That's just what's going to happen. You are not going to shut down the seven foot four giant who's really, really adept at positioning himself around the basket. Now, don't just let him have everything, but in within reason, don't send a ton of doubles. Don't collapse too hard. Don't try to play too much zone defense. Don't let the other guys for Purdue beat you. That is NC State's goal in this game. Wisconsin was able to do it, and Ohio State was able to do it. Now, NC State has played good defense. They held Texas Tech to 67. They held Marquette to 58. They held Duke to 64. That's their second fewest points all year. And that's kind of what they're going to have to do. They're going to need to win this thing on defense against the peripheral pieces of this Purdue offense. Now, DJ Burns was out of his mind in the regional final. Out of his mind. Went 13 of 19 from the floor, had three assists, did not turn it over, blocked a couple of shots, 
he's fun to watch. He's he's the star of the Final Four. We we know that. It's it's very big baby esque for those of us here in Baton Rouge. Incidentally, I found this interesting on uh, on DJ Burns because I went I saw this on Twitter, so I went and looked it up. You know when he was coming out of high school, he was the number five player in the state of Car- South Carolina. You know who the number one player was in his high school class in South Carolina? Zion Williamson. I feel like Zion's been with the Pels for a decade. He's in the same high school class as a guy playing in the Final Four, DJ Burns, this weekend. Um, but Burns is, is fun to watch, but it just feels to me, the more I look at the numbers, I've watched these teams play now over the last two weeks, I think we're going to get the blockbuster final. I think we're going to get UConn and Purdue. I realize that's not a hot take. I realize that's not really putting myself out there. I'm not a huge risk taker here. But I just I think those are the best two teams, and I think that they caught a little bit of a break here catching NC State and, and, and Alabama as opposed to some teams that I think were more consistent all year long. Certainly like Tennessee, Houston with Shed. Those teams, I think, were, were more quality teams than these who have gotten really hot and played great basketball at the most important time. NC State's not even here if they don't throw in a buzzer beater in the ACC tournament against Virginia. But they're here, and it's a really good story. I just think it comes to an end Saturday. I I really, really hope that we get the Purdue-UConn final. Um, that's we love the Thursday and Friday of the tournament opener. We love the buzzer beaters and throwing in a last second three and the 14 seeds giving the three all they want. And that's all really, really fun on those two days that I've called the best two days in sports. I love the NCAA tournament first Thursday and Friday. But by the time we get here to the final four, give me the big boys. And I think that NC State and Bama have a puncher's chance on Saturday, but I'm going to pick against them. I think we see the big boys. I think we see Connecticut. I think we see Purdue. I think we see the defending national champs. I think we see the two-time national player of the year. I think it's going to be awesome on Monday. Saturday, big, big, big one for both, and it's going to be a lot of fun. But I I think that we're getting Purdue and UConn, so that's my story, and I will stick right on to it. We're here at Red Stick Sports for their annual sidewalk sale. Everything in this joint is on sale. I'm looking at all this baseball equipment, 20% off. The bats are 30% off. Everything LSU on the walls, 25% off. I'm looking at the baseball jerseys. I'm looking at fishing shirts. I'm looking at some dry fit polos. Got the Sailor Mike going. Got the Eye of the Tiger. And if you go outside, they got shoes galore, and a lot of them are up to 60% off. If you're looking for it's not too early to go get football cleats or football equipment. That's all in here as well. Get a good deal on it. When it winds around to uh, your youth, the youth in your house playing some football this fall, you can have some discount equipment uh, right there ready for them. So come on by and see us. The sale does extend into tomorrow, but it's a great day to get on by here to Red Stick Sports. We'll take a time out when we come back. LSU and Vanderbilt in game two tonight. What are the keys for the Fighting Tigers? I'll tell you next. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. You are listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Platinum Window Tint, PlatinumWindowTintLLC.com is the website. It's a brand new website. It's fantastic. It's got great pictures of all the great work that Platinum Window Tint has done. You can also request a quote right there on the website. When you think window tinting, I think a lot of us think of, of automobiles, and they do that for your car. It can keep you a little bit cooler when you get into it after your car's been sitting in the sun all day. But they also do great jobs of tinting windows at businesses, at homes. If you've got sun exposure and big windows and your energy bills are out of control in the summer, like most folks are, Platinum Window Tent can help you with that. You can also uh, uh, qualify for a tax credit by getting that done. In some instances, they've seen 40% reductions in energy costs with window tinting from Platinum Window Tent. So have them come out, assess your home or your business, and get that done as the summer months do approach because we know that heat is right around the corner. It's Platinum Window Tent, that website one more time, PlatinumWindowTentLLC.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. He's here. Anyone want a Coors Light? Oh, shoot, I forgot to play the song. I got a guy who can fix this.
Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. And looking forward to 50 more. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, hardy plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Matt Moscona inviting you to join us for Friday's AFR, presented by Dan Juan Cigar Bar. Recap in Game 1, LSU Vandy will preview Game 2 the rest of the weekend, and should the Saints draft a quarterback? We'll discuss 3-6, to 6, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. You're listening to the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Fish and Shrimp. It's getting a little nostalgic earlier here at Red Stick Sports. And I walked in, went over to the uh, to the back right of the store, and they got all the the baseball gloves there. I, I distinctly remember I got the opportunity to to customize my high school glove. I was in eighth grade. I was going to have one glove for the four years of high school, and they had the catalog, uh, catalog and you could go online and like pick the three different customized thing and I got a Wilson A2000 uh, and it was my baby. I loved that glove. I think everyone has like their their favorite piece of, of equipment whether it's your your cleats or whether it's a new hat. You got the wristbands going when you're a kid. Um, my favorite piece of equipment, not bat, not it was my glove. I loved it and I brought it to college and I played catch one time and as things happen in college I just lost it and I lost my glove. So I was talking uh, to Brian Redman who owns uh, Red Stick Sports over here um, about I'm so excited for Myers to get a little bit older. He's two right now, so he can't really do much, although he is obsessed with sports. I don't know how that happened. Um, but I'm ready for him to get old enough to play some catch so I can have an excuse to come buy a glove because I want a glove of my own. I want another A2000. I want to want to put the, the oil on it, bake it, work it in. I want to do the whole thing uh, like I did when I was 12 years old. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to that. However, we're a couple of years away. You may not be a couple of years away, and you can come on by uh, and, and see the great deals here at Red Stick Sports. Get your glove from right there off the uh, the back of the wall. Great, great deals over the next 24 hours here at Red Stick Sports, and we're thrilled to be here on this Friday. Our show is brought to you by Corks. Let's talk some LSU baseball. Uh, tonight, game two, uh, Vanderbilt pitched what was essentially their number four last night. It didn't look like a number four because he does 99 miles an hour, but he is technically their four. And tonight you'll see Vanderbilt's number two, uh, Bryce Cunningham, who is another one of these classic Vanderbilt hard throwing right handers. He's another big dude. He's going to clock in at at uh, 6'5", 230 pounds, and he throws in the mid to upper 90s. He throws very, very hard. Uh, he's got really good stuff. 
Um, South Carolina is the one team to kind of get to him this year. They hit a couple home runs, which is easy to do at Founders Park, um, and, and they beat him. In five innings, they got five hits. Two of them left the yard, and they scored five runs, and they won that game 8-3. to three. Um, Vanderbilt has uh, has won five of his last six starts, including a 13-5 to five win over Auburn and a 4 nothing win over Missouri. Last week against Missouri, just like the guy you saw last night, um, he was fantastic. Seven innings of one hit shutout baseball. Um, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> he was really good against Missouri. He struck out 12 and only walked two. He has an, also had an 11 strikeout no walk performance against Illinois State. Um, but it's a lot of the same stuff that you saw last night. And LSU handled that velocity well, I thought. Um, this is not as good as Hagen Smith, which, which LSU obviously struggled with. Um, and it's kind of similar to Gerangelo Sanja from the right side, although from a little different angle because you're talking about a 6'5 guy and, and Sanja's a little bit shorter. LSU did not handle ver- the velocity very well from Sanja. They did handle it last night, and hopefully they're ready again against uh, against Bryce Cunningham. Um, the key for this game to me is not necessarily LSU's offense. I, you need the offense, but Gage Jump's got to gotta become a dude. Look, um, I'm still going to sit here and and talk about LSU doing really good things in this baseball season. It's just the way that I'm wired until they, they're just so far buried that it's it's a wasted breath. I'm going to talk about them turning this thing around. Hopefully last night was a bit of a start to that. It's more likely, in my opinion, that LSU turns this thing around and starts winning weekends because Gage Jump is better than it is that LSU's lineup all of a sudden gets really big contributions from Michael Braswell, from Paxton Kling, from Jake Brown or Ashton Larson, from Brady Neal. It's, that's a lot to ask, I think. You can be a functional offense like LSU was last night, and Travinsky's going to hit his home runs, and White's going to hit his home runs, and Jones is going to hit his home runs, and you know, you're going to get some good things, and you just hope that you get some clutch hits. But I don't. This is not going to look like last year offensively. I think Gage Jump can be an upper level SEC pitcher. He's not right now. He wasn't great against Arkansas. He ran into some trouble against Mississippi State in the the second time through. He was pretty good against Florida, but he needs to get closer to the guy that we saw in Houston, closer to the guy who went through the entirety of the non-conference schedule and did not allow an earned run. He gave up one unearned run. I'm not asking you to throw seven shutout every week, but he needs to be a guy that LSU can go to and say, I need five and two-thirds of one run, seven strikeout baseball. Like, that's the guy he needs to become. I think that's a, a better bet on that happening than the guys I mentioned and rattled off earlier really becoming offensive forces. And I think it's possible. We heard Demui earlier, and he's saying, I'm looking for seven or eight guys. Well, you've got Holman, and you've got Herring, and you really feel good about those two guys. They're pitching great. I feel good about Ackenhausen. I feel good about Guidry. And depending on how you use that, you heard, I think he can really help. I think it's more likely he helps you for 10 outs on a weekend than what we were hoping for with 20 outs on a weekend, hoping he could get you, you know, six and two-thirds. It's more likely looking like three, three and two-thirds. But that helps. Jump's got to be in that conversation. He's got to match up with number twos in this league. And tonight you're seeing one of the best number twos in the league. It's like Mason Molina in Fayetteville last week or like Brady Tigert last week. A&M's got three capable guys. Nobody that's going to go in the top 50 picks in the draft, but capable guys. You're going to see good twos. And Gage Jump needs to match up with those guys, and it needs to start tonight. You win tonight and you maybe start to create a little bit of momentum. Last night, you won behind your ace when the other team pitched their number four. The pressure was on you to win last night. You did. That's great. But just winning behind Holman is not going to get it. And we know what LSU's looked like in game threes. Run ruled in Starkville, run ruled against Florida, got beat like a drum in the late innings last week. Your pitching staff has fizzled in the end of weekends. It just has. And that puts you at a disadvantage when Carter Holton is getting the ball tomorrow for Vanderbilt. This thing feels really, really good at 10 o'clock tonight. If jump is good and LSU wins, it feels really, really shaky as a fan 
if you lose tonight and Carter Holton's showing up against TBA tomorrow? Like, that's how quickly the emotions can shift in this thing. Not a must win. I'm not using that terminology. It's not. But I'm just painting you the situation. LSU has been terrible in game threes in SEC play. Terrible. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go look up the scores of those games because I can do that right here. It's, it's been, you've been run ruled twice, so I know you've lost by at least 20 in SEC Sundays. But the Florida score on Sunday, I'm sorry, Mississippi State was first. That was 15 to 5. Then you had Florida was 12 to 2. So that's 27 to 7. And then Arkansas was 7 to 5. That's 34 to 12. You've gotten beaten 34 to 12 in game threes. Is that where you want to put your eggs for this weekend trying to win the series? Or do you want to take it tonight with Gage Jump on the mound at home? Like, that's what we're talking about here. Love a big swing from Tommy White tonight. Love a big swing from Jared Jones tonight. Make the plays defensively. They hit you that ground ball, Michael Braswell. Got to make the play. I'm a little concerned with him mentally right now. It's not going to be easy because, as you figure with Vanderbilt, like, they got a bunch of dudes that throw really, really hard. And they didn't go to their A relievers last night. Last night you saw Hilbaki, Horn, and Heisman. You're going to see better dudes tonight because Tim Corbin's going to want to win this series. Now, Vanderbilt hadn't won a single game away from home in league play. They got swept at South Carolina, and they're 0-1 here in Baton Rouge. But tonight, I mean, last night the pressure was on. Like, it's just, it's every day. That's the point of, I'm getting all frustrated almost talking about it, because you put yourself in a 2-7 and seven hole every day. You got to say, well, if you lose this, like, ugh, what does that look like? It's, but if you win, you start to dig yourself out. And all of a sudden, if you're four and seven tomorrow, you're you're getting closer to digging yourself out. It's it's a big game, and and I'm optimistic. I'm going to continue to be optimistic. I hope Gage Jump gets ahead, throws strikes, and misses some bats. Arkansas is the toughest team in the league to strike out, and they didn't last week. Jump had trouble missing bats. He got to some two strike counts, but he couldn't finish. Hopefully, with a little more uh, juice. From a home crowd, he can finish some guys off and get a win tonight. Hopefully it's a really good crowd. The weather's awesome. It is a Friday instead of a Thursday. Uh, hopefully it's, it's a good crowd at the box and the Tigers come out and play some really, really good baseball. 7 o'clock first pitch. If you want to listen to it, you can catch it on Eagle 98.1. Pre-game at 6.30 will be Chris Blair and Doug Thompson on the call. Very much looking forward to the ball game tonight. Our baseball breakdowns all season long are brought to you by Pluckers. we got one more segment to go. Of course, that's going to be take it or leave it from right here at Red Stick Sports. It's a Friday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Audio, video, security, solutions, avssla.com. You can check them out on Instagram as well. Great stuff on their Instagram page at avss underscore br. If you've got a great outdoor area that you love to use, whether it's a pool, it's a kitchen area, just a seating area you love to hang out, we love to hang out in the backyard and just watch the Myers man run around and try to hit golf balls. Not great at hitting the golf balls, but he likes to try. And when we're doing that, we can listen to some tunes because we've had the folks at Audio Video Security Solutions come out and install some speakers in our backyard that we can control right there on an app via our iPhone. It makes things so convenient. You can adjust the volume, change Pandora stations. If I'm in charge, we're listening to some country jams. If my wife's in charge, it's going to be Taylor Swift every single freaking time. But we enjoy it. It's because of the friends at Audio Video Security Solutions. Check them out online. They can do the same thing for you. Mitchell Fisher and his team are fantastic, and we appreciate them part, being part of the Hunt Palmer Show. They're online at avssla.com. It's Audio Video Security Solutions at avssla.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge.
is the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. BRAC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. BRAC, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, hardy plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Time to start dancing in the desert. It's the 2024 NCAA Men's Final Four in Phoenix. Tune in for live coverage starting Saturday afternoon at 3. From the team at Westwood One right here on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Fried Fish and Shrimp. Shout out to the folks at Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Man, they have got some good food over there. The catfish is awesome. Love the Jumbo Gulf Shrimp. Their recipe born right here in the seafood capital of the world, South Louisiana. If you're one of those folks that goes, ah, I'm from South Louisiana, I'm not going through a drive through for my seafood. Just try it once. It is awesome, awesome stuff over there at Corks. You want a po' boy? They can fix you right on up with a catfish po' boy or a fried shrimp po' boy. Fantastic stuff over there at Corks. I want to remind you uh, one more time to come on by Red Stick Sports today or tomorrow. They've got their annual sidewalk sale. This place is packed with good deals. I'm looking at a rack 75% off on this Adidas apparel. Everything in here that's LSU is 25% off. You're looking for a baseball bat for the youth baseball player in your life, 30% off. We're talking about $500 bats here. You can get over $100 off on them. That's an awesome, awesome deal. One of the cool things I saw in here earlier is some purple and gold jerseys you can customize. Put a kiddo's name on the back right there of an LSU football jersey. You can do it all right here at Red Stick Sports, their sidewalk sale today and tomorrow here on Essen. So get on by if you're in the area. We've certainly had a great time here on this gorgeous Friday. All right, Jordan Kitchens, let's play some Take It or Leave It. All right. Well, the first one would be Bronny James, the son of NBA superstar LeBron James, will enter the 2024 will enter the 2024 NBA draft while maintaining his college eligibility. He announced he will also enter the transfer portal to have a flexibility as he works out for NBA teams before making a final decision based on their evaluations. Take it or leave it. If you want out, nobody's going to take me, and nobody's going to draft Bronny James either, if, in, unless they think it's going to help LeBron come to their team. 
Um, he's he's a he's not even all conference level college player, so he's not going to be an NBA player. This very much looks like he will just enter the transfer portal, maybe find a different place to play. I know obviously there's a coaching change at USC. Eric Musselman's now the head coach. It was important to LeBron that Bronny be close to him as he plays for the Lakers and plays for USC, so he can get over there and catch as many games as possible. Um, Bronny's a nice college player, but he's not going to get drafted in the two round NBA draft. So uh, I think he'll just end up playing somewhere else. All right, take it or leave it. All right, Purdue's take it or leave Zach Eady wins Zach second Eady. straight. Wins second his straight. AP Player of the Year. His AP Player of the Year. Becoming the second Becoming player the since Ralph Sampson since went back to back. And that would be from 1981 to 1983. Take it or leave it. Take it or leave it. Got to take it. He's been the best player in the country. Um, he's really tall. Uh, that's very difficult to deal with. And I know a lot of people have a lot of issues with the way that Zach Eady is officiated. We're going to see that on display tomorrow. Uh, certainly those in Knoxville are not thrilled with the way that that whistle worked against them. Uh, he's just a diff difficult dude to handle. And if you listen to my breakdown of this uh, of this game that's coming up tomorrow early in the show today, um, you just got to deal with the fact that Edie's going to get his 27, 28 points. Like, that's just going to happen. The way you stop Purdue is to stop the other guys. They have surrounded, and it's a great job by Matt Painter, he's surrounded the best big man in college basketball with guys who can fill it up from deep, and that makes them difficult to guard. Don't collapse on him too much. Don't settle back in zone because you're scared of him. Don't send too many doubles. Just play him straight up. He's going to get his 27 anyway. Keep the other guys from scoring 22, and that's the way you've got to try to beat Purdue. But he absolutely deserves uh, player of the year. He's been fantastic, uh, even if you consider the way that it's officiated. He's just he's really tough to deal with. All right. So former LSU Tiger, Tari Easton, now plays for the Rockets. He wore a Warriors come out to play shirt yesterday versus their game versus the Warriors. But after the Warriors beat the Rockets 133 to 110, a massive game you know, for the playing implications. Easton exited the arena shirtless with a vest and a big diamond chain on. Take it or leave it. Take it or leave it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll take it. Leaving the arena shirtless with a vest and a diamond chain is a pretty savage move. But hey, if you're going to wear the shirt, you're going to need to back that up with a little bit of play. I realize that Houston's not great. Um, but you gotta you gotta come out and, and take care of your business if you're gonna you're gonna handle that shirt. Tari Eason was an awesome player at LSU, and I'm not surprised that he's he's been an impact guy in the NBA. I think he was a guy that you could count on to, to stuff the stat sheet a ton of different ways, and he's he's done that at LSU. He's done that I think in the NBA as well. But hey, if you're gonna talk to Smack, you gotta you gotta back it up. That's for sure. All right, Hunt man, this one is near and dear to my heart. So my Pelicans, Zion Williamson is listed questionable for tonight's game versus the Spurs. Can we take it or leave it that he will play tonight? Oh, what, it's a finger injury. It's a finger injury. Jam finger, to be exact. Well, I'll leave it. I, I've not seen a lot that lends me to believe that Zion's going to going to play through much. Now, he's stayed pretty healthy this year, and I know we had the big scare earlier this week with the uh, with him getting dove into, and he left the floor and the whole thing, and I realized we got a finger issue that we're trying to deal with uh, as well. That's why he didn't play in crunch time. Um, I, I think that he may sit. We'll see. I mean, you're the Pelicans guy. You tell me. Is he going to play? Is he going to play well? Are they going to win? We, we need him. We need him. We need him to play. I will hope so. It's a must-win game at this point. You you flopped every game at home. At Well, I, I'm not even going to say flop. You know, Devin Booker came in there and did what he had to do, so I can't even can't put that in nobody, but that's just God, I guess. That's just God. But – at this point, Hunt, all I can say is if Victor Wimbenyama comes in there because they're uh, Jeremy Sohan and Keldon Johnson should not be playing, if I'm not mistaken. So it's just Wimby and a bunch of nobodies, even though the NBA. But so I'm just going to assume that we can get the job done. But knowing the Pelicans, who knows? Pelicans, who knows? So your confidence level is like 5 out of 10, 6 out of You didn't sound like a really comp. Oh, no, I'm not confident at all. I'm not confident at all. I, I have no confidence. My, my confidence left once Devin Booker walked in there and gave us a 50-piece. 50-piece. Well, he won't be there today, but you are going to have to travel out west and see him here uh, very, very shortly. So we'll see. Hopefully the Pels can get it done tonight uh, in a big one. Uh, and they need uh, need the big fella out there playing some basketball. That's going to do it here for a Friday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show. I, uh, I am super fired up for this baseball game tonight. The Tigers need it so, so badly. Um, if they can get this one tonight, you start to feel like maybe they're – 
they're starting to figure something out. It was obviously a really, really difficult hole to dig out of, but hopefully uh, they have found uh, found something outside of Luke Holman. Come on, Gage Jump. Let's get it done tonight. If you missed any of our show today, you can catch it on demand. 1045ESPN.com's On Demand tab, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, wherever you find your sound, you can certainly find us. You can always find us on YouTube as well. Appreciate Bo Wegman for setting everything up on remote today and making things happen from a video perspective. I opened the show talking LSU and Vandy. Game one, talk some spring football. A lot on defense today with Preston Guy. You can find that on YouTube at Hunt on LSU. Chris Demuy is with us in the first hour as well, talking some baseball. Always enjoy his perspective. Jamal Adams to the Saints, does that make some sense? I don't think so. I talked about it at the end of hour number one, and that's on Hunt on Saints on YouTube as well. Matt McMahon gets a big commitment from Victorious Miller. Final four thoughts and LSU banner. But we'll see you to uh, Monday. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz